so the announcements for the Panasonic S1 and the S1R has already been released. I talked about some of the features in my previous video, which you can check out. You will be wondering what lenses are actually available for this camera. Panasonic has been a bit more clever compared to Sony when they first released their E-mount system because there wasn't a lot of lens choices, which meant that the early adopters struggled and the lenses that were there were quite expensive. With the coalition between Panasonic, Leica and Sigma, you have a variety of options, quality and prices to choose from. But the question is, when this camera launches, what lenses will be available? Based on the information from the three companies, I will be talking about the different lenses that will be basically available for you to get on the onset of the camera being ready for sale. In this very video, I would look into the super wide angle and the wide angle choices that you've got from Leica, from Panasonic and from Sigma. So bear with me till the end. Let's go. So in terms of offerings, Panasonic has promised to release 10 lenses in the year 2019. Sigma would look to release 16 lenses. And at the moment, Leica has six full frame lenses that can be used straight away with the Elmont system. So that's on the S1 and the S1R. Panasonic is going to be releasing the 24105 at the onset of the camera being released. The 24105 is at the max aperture of f4. Not super exciting, but 24105 is a really good range. There's there's literally no need to go into the benefits of the 24105. Almost every camera company in the full frame system has the 24105. It's very versatile. F4 means that you're going to always have a good sharpness because you're going to be using this camera and it's a full frame camera. F4 is quite su sufficient for a lot of things that you're going to be recording. Good thing with this lens, it's going to be image stabilized. So in conjunction with the camera, you've got six stops of stabilization. Pretty sweet. The price, however, is where this lens is a bit Ooh, can I buy this or should I just hold on to my horses? This lens is going for £1,300 in the UK. I'm guessing in the US that will be around $1,500-$600. You do the conversion. Either way, it's not going to be a cheap lens. The closest alternative to that from Leica is the 16-35. So like I said, I'm concentrating on the super white to white. So they've got the Leica Super Vario Elmer SL 16, 16 to 35, mouthful. And this is a temperature of f3.5 to f4.5. Are you ready? This lens is going to cost £4,700. No, I'm not joking. £4,700 for this 16 to 35 and it's at f 3.5 to 4.5 i'm just gonna leave that there on the sigma side of things so sigma hasn't actually um released any lenses yet but given the current art series the ceo mentioned that they will be replicating their art series for the l mount is it going to be a fresh new build I don't really think so because of the iteration that they did to the Sony e-mount series it literally looks like you've got the art series lens and then they've just slapped an adapter at the end of it good thing about that is they were able to iterate and release the lenses quite quickly for the e-mount system so if Sigma is going to go in this direction we might be seeing a lot of lenses being released straight away from Sigma. So on the wide angle side for Sigma, they've got the Sigma 14 millimeter, the F1.8. There are hundreds of reviews on YouTube 
for this lens on the Canon system Sony and Nikon or Nikon. Um, this lens is going for £1,199 at the moment in the UK. Would there be much price difference for the um, S1 and S1 RL mount? I'm not sure yet, but knowing the history of Sigma and the Art Series, the Art Series has been the best line of lenses so far. I've really enjoyed using the Art Series. I used the 35mm and the 50mm, the 1.4, and I really enjoyed those lenses. The lenses are very sharp. Unfortunately, quite heavy, but at the same time, sharpness, really great price. It's just, it's a good bargain, really. So with Sigma actually choosing to release lenses for this camera system, it's quite promising that you will have a good range of prices to choose from. So from the low-ish cost, which is gonna be on the Sigma, Panasonic will literally be right in the middle with the prices and Leica definitely will just blow all the prices out of the water. So if we're comparing the options of the wide lenses. So Sigma also has a 24mm at 1.4. At the moment in the UK, it's about £600. So if we compare the, let's say the 24 range of the lenses, for Sigma, you're spending £600 for a 1.4 maximum aperture. For Panasonic with the 24105, you're spending 1300 and that's at the max aperture of f4. On the Leica side, you're going to be spending 4,700 and that's at the 16, 16 to 35 with a max aperture of 3.5. Definitely, that's a huge price difference. I don't even need to be a mathematician to work that out. It's a huge price difference. If you check some reviews on the Leica lenses, they have been praised for just being amazingly engineered but at the end of the day does your customer actually care about the amazing engineering of your lenses that's between you and your customer and if you're a hobbyist then it's just a matter of how much money do you have yourself i think i'm going to be swaying towards the sigma lenses the only thing that you lose with the sigma lenses is most likely it's going it's not going to have image stabilization with the history of their art lenses they were not image stabilized but this um, s1 and s1r they've got in body stabilization so there will be a really good compensation in camera yes it'll be great to have the lens stabilized as well but price quality you know something has to give at the end of the day in conclusion for the super wide to wide angle lenses Definitely on the quality aspect of it, when the lenses are released, we'll be able to test the quality against each other. But when we're comparing the prices, Sigma is definitely going to be the cheapest. Panasonic is going to be in the middle and Leica is going to be on the most expensive side of things. In the next video, I will be looking at the medium um, angle lenses. Again, I can definitely detect some similarities again, but the good thing is there are gonna be lenses to use with this camera the moment it's released. Thank you guys for staying till the end of this video. It's Samuel from 10 Things I Like. See you in the next video. Peace.